What's up, everybody, and welcome to This Week in Frax. I'm your host, Sam, and we got my beautiful two co-hosts, Kit, DeFi Dave. Hi. Back in, back against the, <laughs> the wall. Some pink this, is, this is my birthplace, quite literally. <laughs> I was born in the flowers. It's so nice because, like, you know, I and Dave, or like Kit has, and I have these, like, really boring white walls. Yeah, it makes me so unhappy to be in these like white rooms, and you are just in a joyful family environment with art all over the walls. It's great. I love it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> There's no place like home. Exactly. Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, I just want to do a quick update on our metronome to the dome week four. Uh, we have it just was at twenty one sixty. I took a screenshot at oh eight. Now it's twenty one fifty eight. But we're really on pace for about 30 plus APR right now. So our collateral continues to grow. Uh, we have a small amount of uh, synthetic debt as well too. And so everything seems to be proceeding nicely. Uh, I do want to talk this week about how you can lock MET. So MET is the governance token for metronome. And you can lock it up for up to two years. That would provide you a bonus for boosting voting power and also gives a trading fee discount. So by adding MET and locking it up for a longer period of time, uh, you can get a maximum of 5x voting power towards ESMET. So, and also a 80% trading fee discount. So you can find all this on the Metronome website and also in the docs, uh, which we'll have a link to in the uh, uh, in the show notes. Additionally, uh, one thing that you can do with metronome VE positions, unlike Curve or Frax, is that they are transferable. And in addition to that, uh, they have early exits. So if you want to rage quit out, you can definitely do that. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week. We will be back for the next week of Metronome to the Dome. And so I don't know if you guys heard, but the Frax website was hacked this week. It wasn't the, the was it hacked? Like, oh, no. What, did they come out with a report, uh, the postmortem of exactly what happened? Yeah, so essentially it's a DNS hijacking. Uh, Frax uses name.com as their mm -hmm. hosting provider. And someone was able to get into the kind of inner workings of name.com and then redirect traffic away from the Frax website to a Russian uh, like Cloudflare alternative. Uh, this was up for about two to three hours. During that time period, the Frax team told everybody to not touch the website. Uh, additionally, they reached out on Twitter to name.com and name.com got in touch with them really quick and sorted the situation out. Uh, but it does highlight that you got to be careful with what you're using. And one of the things that the team actually said was that the uh, TLS certificate, like if you look in the top left of your browser up here there's like a little lock on the website mm -hmm. and so what that means is that that website is connected to a uh, tls certificate and uh, that means that the owner of that website has cryptographically proven uh, that they own the site and that it is safe and connected to whomever is the actual owner so when the the frax website got redirected to this new dns uh, that certificate broke. And so P anybody that was trying to interact with the site, you know, that like big red warning that pops up on your web, your browser, if you're going to like yeah. a suspected uh, spam Continue site, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. You got to press continue anyways. So anybody who would have gone to the Frax website during that time period would have gotten that big red uh, warning not to go. Wow. Wow. I mean, it shows, you know, the, and highlights you know, the risk associated with, you know, mm -hmm. the way front end infrastructure is now, like, you know, we talk a lot about decentralization, decentralization, and yet like we still rely on uh, decentralized front ends, but you know, there's obviously decentralized alternatives that are coming out. I'm sure like this would be something the team would want to encourage and who knows, maybe they'll, who, who knows, like, uh, like what could happen in the future, like in terms of funding these things, maybe there'll be a grant or something. I would love to see this built like a decentralized front end. Um, but yeah. we'll see. What do you guys think? I think it's just one of those things that happens. I mean, it's, it's very similar to SIM swapping. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you're using a centralized company to, to host, 
there isn't really like a good alternative to it. And so this is just going to be part of it. Wait, Frax isn't the first, right? I can think of convex. It's happened. Curve. Oh, there's so many. There's Curve. so many. It Curve. To it happened to. Like it Coin gecko. Coin gecko. Yeah. Literally like everywhere. So it's not Nothing like new. a Frax thing. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing new. Um, so there actually wasn't any governance votes this week for once. We talked about last week about the PE Fraxy gauge controller that got passed. Mm -hmm. uh, FPI being able to put collateral into uh, SFRAX and FXBs that also passed as well too. Uh, and uh, there was another vote to add USD plus as in the Frax base pool on Arbitrum as a, a gauge controller that also passed as well too. So, uh, and then before that, well, this was two weeks ago. We already talked about the best of vote that didn't pass. So nothing, nothing in governance this week. Nobody's actually posted anything. Uh, there was some discussions in the chat about the Temple Frax LP, which do you guys remember Temple? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you remember them? Like I, like I, I, it was they were big. They were big in the narratives of Frax for a couple of months, and then. They were going to, can, do you guys remember this? They, they were going to have this, this like rage quit. They were going to pull oh, the temple. Liquidity. Yeah. With temple. You remember this? This was, like, I do. It was like a big, big talk. Yeah. And they, they, like we, we actually let people rage quit out of the pools. We had a vote. So temple, I think, I believe the, the story was that temple wanted to, uh, wind down or dissolve or it, the, the vibes weren't good. So they had this rage quit vote. They said they were going to migrate to somewhere else. Yeah. And so they were one of the first rage quits out of a gauge. Uh, and and they didn't even rage quit. Yeah, no, a ton of people rage quit out of that gauge because temple was like, Hey, we're shutting down. Like, like Frax opened it up. Frax at the time allowed them to get out. And then temple went back and was like, Oh, Hey, like, we're not going to, we're not going to rage quit anymore. We're not dissolving. Uh, but now the the team, like the protocol protocol owned liquidity, which is like all temple, I believe it's like 70% temple now, uh, it's locked. Nobody can actually join it. Uh, there's no new deposits that can come in, but they have a huge amount of frac shares. Uh, and right now, I believe they are voting 6% uh, of all VEFXS emissions into the uh, temple LP. Um, and Wait, so they pulled a bait and switch. Yeah, a big one. Yeah, and a lot of people are not happy, as well too. Um, so what? The, so mm -hmm. okay, continue. Oh yeah. So like in the in the chat, uh, Grills was talking about this. Where? Um, <clears throat> oh yeah. So they switched to what's called like a a isolated pool, right? Um, let me see if I can find this. What were you going to say, Dave? Wasn't the pool going to be shut down or something soon or what? Yeah, here. So let me let me pull up the the Telegram chat and I can share it. Um, okay. All right. So Grills asked, uh, "Hey, can we do something about the Frax Temple pool? I feel like the protocol emissions are completely wasted on it, considering the fact that nobody can add LP to it." Typical Temple basically owns an isolated pool after they shut down their Stacks product. Uh, they did a sneaky bait and switch to make people rage quit by first saying they would not bribe the pool anymore. And then when everybody rage quit, suddenly they're bribing it in a large way again. Um, since they have an isolated pool, it no longer helps the Frax supply grow, uh, which is the whole point of having the, the Frax gauges, fracture gauges. And so they want to either force them to open up deposits uh, or just kill the gauge if they refuse. And so like C2 came in mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like C C2 is pretty, pretty like surgical, I would say in his comments. Uh, I know that he's watching chat, uh, but you know, when he does say something, I, I, I do take a look at it and uh, see what he says. So C2 comes in and says, I'm not exactly sure on details, but it sounds like same kind of problem that crazy rebase tokens have, where as a holder, you would only stake for the rebase APR because it's insane. And then the protocol becomes the only actual LP. Then you get inefficient incentives cause nothing makes them compete at market levels. Um, so they, there's like more talk about that. Grill says, uh, yeah, right now the Temple Dow owns like 60 to 70% of the LP and they're getting 6% of all frac shares emissions. Uh, it just seems extremely wasteful that they have an isolated pool like this since it does nothing to help the frac supply. Um, 
so like uh, lasso actually comes down and I believe, oh yeah. So grills finishes up saying like, I, I think he's just a little annoyed because he was a part of temple. And he said that uh, in 24 days, the pool is going to unlock and they're planning on moving to balancer. Uh, so the bribing that pool will have to stop and then they'll have to, uh, try to get a new, well, they'll have to get a new gauge to vote for, right? Because if they move to balancer, they'll they'll have to uh, try to get votes for that new contract. So, if there mm -hmm. is political will, not to just give six uh, percent of all emissions to an isolated pool that's protocol and liquidity for Temple, uh, that's controlled. But I don't, yeah, then it may not go through. So why would they leave if they're getting six percent? No, they're just going to shift. So they're going to shift their current LP uh, from. Uh, probably either Curve or Uniswap where it is right now and then shift it over. Is it in FraxSwap? Or maybe FraxSwap, yeah. Uh, wherever or maybe, right maybe it's going to yeah. shift it to... Uh, to uh, mm -hmm. balancer. balancer. Yeah. Joining uh, the or Wars. Did you guys see Butter today? Yeah, I did. Yeah. That, was that sounds really interesting, yeah. Um, like VE for... Like... like, in, like Imagine if Uniswap had VE, like just built in, like or like that would be. And Universe had a Uniswap had a convex. That's basically uh, what Butter is to Pancake Swap. Great name, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Does Pancake? I mean, the Pancake Swap has a VE system. Or? Yeah, they do. Okay, they have a VE then. system. Okay. Yep, okay. they have a VE system, and you know that's why this something like this could be built. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so yeah. taking a look at the uh, Temple LP at the moment, uh, this one has, let's take a look. Uh, so they have $4.3 million worth of TVL. Uh, and then they're getting, uh, if they have max lock VFXS, which I believe they do, they're getting 51% on that APR. Boo. Sorry, sorry. I, mean, like I just don't like. I don't like. I don't like bait and switches. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe there's another side of the story. Yeah, maybe we should, we should ask the temple guys there, to come on because I mean, again, we should yeah. we should have them explain themselves because like the framing here is really bad and like gut reaction is say boo, but like you know we gotta like take a step back. You know, we got to be Kantian. We got to be rational. Uh, we got to hear both sides. Yeah, uh, Miri and Lux, if you guys are out there, please come back. We should invite them on the like first ten minutes of like this week in Frax. Be like, yo, guys, like, w what is your response to this? It's a good point. Maybe they maybe they're available tomorrow. We can add this in in the middle. We'll do some yeah. editing magic. Um, if not, then we'll try to get them on for next week and we'll break the story as we go forward. Uh, cause I'm sure there's more to it. Right. I remember talking. There's always them. more that eats meets the eye. Yeah. Uh, Miri and Lux were great to talk with and they're probably not out to be like malicious in any way. Um, no, I, it's hard to imagine Miri as malicious and it feels like, you know, it's, it's that one person. It's like, there's a whole Dow and stuff. Yeah. Uh, another governance vote that happened external to the FRAX protocol is that uh, Hourglass, previously Pitch FXS, has voted, and they're still in the voting process, but it's 100% voting right now. Uh, they're voting to convert Pitch FXS into a TBT. And TBT is essentially like a time locked NFT version of a uh, VEFXS lockup. And what this would mean is that they're switching from the convex style system where all VEFXS is permanently relocked over and over and over again into uh, variable locked uh, like time like time box NFTs. So that in the future, say in two, three, four years from now, uh, you could actually get that VEFXS back as frac shares and have it be liquid again. And the reason this for this is, cool. is that pitch FXS has been way off the peg. <laughs> it's been 50% mm -hmm. off the peg for months and people have not been very happy with it. No, they have not. Yeah. It's hard 
Kit, you know, it's hard to do these things. No one wants to rap because of this. That's why I'm, that, yeah, no way. No way. No way I've, Jose. Wrapped, I've touched a CVX FXS. And that's like the only one I've touched. And I haven't been in that pool in a hot minute too. So, yeah. So when I checked uh, the other day, okay. So let me pull up the screen share again, just so you guys can see. Um, if this goes through, then that means that in the future, the pitch FXS, the FXS that pitch has will become liquid again and you'll be able to get it back. So in theory, the, the gap should close like one pitch FXS, which I think is one V FXS, right? But maybe not. I, I thought it was, uh, it's trading at $2 and 79 cents at the moment, which is a greater than 50% discount. If it's a one to one to FXS, this is just alpha right here. It's like, if it, Cause if it passes, it's going to like go, I mean, yeah, the, there'll be, it's, it's like a zero, it's like a bond. You're waiting yeah, for how long is it. Th three years. You said four years, uh, December 10th. So yeah. I mean, yeah, four, it could be four years. Right. But if you're, if you're planning on buying frac shares for the long term, four years, yeah. you that, right. Is there like a pitch FXS FXS pool? No, it's a pitch FXS frax pool. Maybe that's why it's so off peg because it's not like there's, it be, but yeah, yeah, that's, it said, I think in the proposal, December 10th, 2026. So that's when it unlocks. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you're in, like, I, I'm sure that this should trade back towards, uh, like back towards peg. Well, it has to like if it's if it's going to unlock in the future, it has to trade back towards peg uh, because right Man. now the assumption in the price is I'm guessing that that people are just saying that, oh, hey, it's permanently locked. But now it will be unlocked in the future. Um, so if a 60 percent discount for fractures isn't enough uh, to get pitch FXS, this could be your chance to buy FXS below 280, yeah. not financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what else happened this week? Oh yeah. Uh, we all should have bought Solana and, uh, maybe Faxton's <laughs> moved to Solana. <laughs> That's a, you know, I'll never forget at the, at like the Frax, like two year anniversary party, Solana was like $8. Uh, crazy. crazy. Well, I'm sure once Frax chain comes out, we'll be looking back on Frax with the same kind of like, mm -hmm. uh, do you guys remember buying Frax at, at four bucks? Um, Let's see. Steak Frax was added to Zapper. So I don't know if you guys use Zapper, but it's been added there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how about Prisma? We should talk about Prisma Finance with uh, you talk about Prisma? S oh, yeah. Frax Eve. Yeah, definitely. Uh, do you want to talk about it, Kit? Kit. 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 Kit, can you hear us? I don't think he can. His, his yeah, headphones okay, I'm back. back. Sorry. My, my headphone okay. died. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that it's like that uh interview that uh john brady did with sam where he's like sam 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 <laughs> sam <laughs> no i'm here i'm here sorry so yeah so so prisma finance right like i think yeah. i checked this morning um it was already 60 million of 30 million in there yeah so the tvl has has broken 250 mil today uh i've got the screen right here that I'm yeah as frax eth is 62 million and the yields are high i have to say ridiculous so, ridiculous. ridiculous uh the, the stake frax eth cap has already been like hit at 33 million pretty incredible um actually all the caps except for our eth have been hit uh, but mm -hmm. look at these aprs by by taking debt if you take a 90% debt position, you're earning up to 88% just for taking that debt. Uh, and then you can take your MKUSD and deposit it into the stability pool where you can earn a boosted APR of 106%, or you could put it into one of these various curve pools to include MakerUSD Frax Base Pool, which has TVL of 17.12 million and earn a boosted yield up to 145%. Pretty crazy. Nuts nuts you would say yeah uh kind of awesome that frax has the largest uh pools along with crv usd 
Yeah, that is pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see like Prisma out um, and like getting all this excitement. It's like, uh, as a Tetra node puts it, uh, DeFi summer all over again. Oh yeah, Tetra's been happily chilling this on his uh, timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Today. <laughs> Are we back? Is is this the resurgence? Like, do, does DeFi kick it off? Because everybody needs to at least first. We need the ETF before. We need the ETF. I think we're back. Everything feels like we've gotten to a new place. I mean, nature has healed itself at this point. I think. Mm -hmm. Like the the pain trade is over. All right. All right. I guess now it's time to. Can I? Because uh, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Uh, let's let's talk hopium for a second, right? And we're going to zoom out, and I want to take a look at Bitcoin real fast, right? And this was a tweet that I saw earlier today, put out by uh, Julian Temer, and uh, this was a had a great picture, right? Uh, talking about Bitcoin's volatility, and if you look at this picture, which I'm going to bring up here, it's on Twitter. Uh, so take a look at this, right? So this is a chart of the risk and return of every major asset that you can buy right so right here we have the spx it's at a 20 percent return right um and uh china curve is, yeah so this curve is like the risk curve right so you you know you look at the risk and you look at the reward the return and um uh, it uses like weekly returns and uh uh, yeah. So this is, this is like all major assets, right? Now let's, let's add in Bitcoin, right? Now we add in the chart of Bitcoin. Here's BTC up here on the risk return, right? <laughs> here's the kind of like normalized average line of risk and return. And then here's Bitcoin up here. Right. Um, and so if we look at like drawdowns and rallies from the last three years, um, we can see that BTC has had a 54% decline but off of the lows, it's already up 84%. Wow. Uh, yeah. So volatility is both a, a blessing and a curse. It's hard to like, in the short term, when you're like dealing with the chop, when you're dealing with the volatility, it's rough and a lot of people can't handle it. But on a long enough time scale, if you zoom back and, you know, you see the bigger picture, you just see the opportunities just so great not financial advice that it's hard to you know you can't ignore it yeah exactly if you're if you're looking at charts on a monthly timeline instead of a weekly timeline uh everything looks much better right like if we if we just take a look at again like looking at bitcoin which i think is the bellwether for everything else in our industry uh if we look at a monthly chart it looks great like if i showed you this chart and didn't tell you what it was you would say that this chart is incredibly bullish and that it looks really great. Doesn't it? Mm. Just fucking send it. Come on. Send it. ETF, exactly. where are you? I know. Actually, like, it's a crypto investor. No ETF doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah exactly. So even so, so probably one of my I, favorite moments um, in podcast history was crypto investor. But if there's no <laughs> ETF, doesn't matter. Send it. Exactly. Yeah. I, so I, I did a, a look back on so GLD, right? The gold ETF. Prior to, to GLD, the only way for you to trade gold on an exchange was either through uh, options, futures, or through gold mining slash royalty companies. So the GLD ETF was like the first instrument for normal uh, retail users to kind of access or even institutions without that. Anyways, mm -hmm. but what's interesting is the product was announced in, I think, 2004. So here's the timeline for that. It got announced on October 24th. Then on October 29th, the SEC approved it. And then it's launched on November 18th. Okay. Are you kidding me? Like less than a month? Yeah, it, it, it launched within like less than a month of its announcement. What's interesting, though, is that the run-up to the launch was when gold rallied but right after the launch it was the peak for the next 230 days like it uh, was, so it leading up to that november 18th date was the tip and after that it just did this ranging it never broke that november 18th uh, yo could you <laughs> yeah so could you imagine that would be such a 
phenomenal move if it just crabs after the ETF is approved. Like everyone would just be like, oh, what? <laughs> yeah. So for for me, at least my my uh, uh, playbook. I'm gonna tell you guys is I'm I plan on getting long at the month before the ETF launch. So assuming that we get approved January 10th, right? Because that mm-hmm. has to be the thing. And then about three weeks after that is when we kind of rally. So around the end of December, uh, probably on my birthday is when I'm going to just go full retard long uh, into it <laughs> a month before the ETF launch. Full left curve. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, me, that's my plan. Let me show you this chart because this is something that I found the other day. This is, this is a chart of inflows uh, by the thousands of tons uh, into the ETF, right? So look at this first couple of years. So in 2003, you had minimal inflows. And then over the course of like 10 years, this represents about $150 billion worth of inflows into the ETF. And it's, it's already eclipsed itself. It's much higher than this now. Um, we're looking at close to a trillion dollars worth of inflows at this point. Uh, for for yeah. gold, and so I well, expect uh, but, Bitcoin to have this this yeah. same type of but, uh, influence. But this is too long, Sam. Like like you really need to click into that 2004, right when that first jump is was when the ETF launched. Like within mm-hmm. those months, look at those months as price action. Like if you zoom out, it looks phenomenal. <laughs> but let's be real, we don't want to get rich in. 2015 years, you know, that, that chart show 15 years, you know, and uh, there was also here's here's one more uh, picture that I want to show you is that like another thing that happened after the um, the gold ETF came out is that uh, the price and this doesn't show 2003, but from 2003 to 2000 and uh, I believe 11 and 12, there was 11 years of increasing prices in gold like it, it was one of the longest uh bull markets ever for an asset and it didn't stop until it hit like almost two thousand dollars an ounce and this was up from like two hundred dollars an ounce back in back in the early 2000s mm-hmm. yeah and trust yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen the same graphs as you have the only thing i haven't seen is anybody break down that early early day down to like the month portion um, you know, there was, I, I listened to a really, I will include in the notes, but there's a really good podcast that I listened to over on Blockworks where they had uh, the guys who were running, uh, oh shoot, Bitwise, I believe. Uh, they, they have an ETF over there, right? But those guys that are running the, the Bitwise ETF uh, were running ETF.com back in like the early 2000s. And so they covered the gold like introduction, the GLD ETF introduction. And they said it was super similar to what we're seeing right now. Like people were very skeptical about ETFs. Uh, everything was done through mutual funds, high fees at the time. And, you know, you would go to these like gold conferences and it'd be a bunch of like people putting gold in their basements or like digging holes in the ground to buy gold and silver for, right? Like the crazy people who thought the end of the world was coming and much similar to like if you go to a Bitcoin conference now, right? Uh, and then after the ETF, that's when everything professionalized, the institutions came, you saw huge institutional demand for it. And look at where we are right now. Like ETFs are like commodity ETFs are so ubiquitous and so widespread and 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 just used by every single person that they're a very common part of everyone's portfolio now. Yeah, ETF.com is a phenomenal <laughs> URL to own. That's like crypto.com of 20 years ago. Exactly. ETF.com. Yeah. <laughs> mm. um, so yeah, uh, it would have been it, without the DNS hack, it would have been a slow week, but uh, yeah, I guess that's what you want, right? Like, like, uh, like Rune it, said, it can't be. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I would say, what like, did Rune Rune say? Said, like, like hopefully Frax turns into like a very boring and conservative protocol uh, and nothing bad ever happens. And it just kind of like works all the time. As pro, you know, as protocols get bigger, they have the responsibility to become safer. I how about more boring, like just more conservative, and they just kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. And it's like it get, yeah, because Maker it got more. Oh, as Rune said on the pod, like you know, Maker is known to be like incredibly conservative and boring, and like attracted yeah. like those types to their governance, and you know, probably you know on the 
the long term it like worked worked out for them. Look where they are. They they're like the biggest decentralized stablecoin. They've been around for six years, and so you know we we all believe and we all know Frax can get to that level. It's just like a matter of putting in the work and growing and scaling. Yeah. Big props to you guys for getting that interview done. I, I thought it was one of our best <laughs> that we've done. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, I, you know how I got it. I, uh, I just was in the Sakura Dow discord. Um, and I was like, just like, you know, cause I love, I love, I'm literally love Sakura. And then I wrote about sub DAOs and, you know, I asked for his input, we went back and forth and I asked, and then, uh, yeah, you know, I was able to get him on. Um, I'm really proud of that. Cause you know, he's known to like, not really do that many interviews and stuff. So it's cool to get him on flywheel. I thought if we, we added a super clip on Twitter that I made and, and when I first listened to it, I thought it was like, wow, this is like crazy stuff. Like, but then I re-listened to it again and having looked back upon my own history in crypto, like, I think that he's kind of in the right place, right? Where he's gone through several different cycles with a bunch of different <laughs> people and yeah. he's seen pretty much everything that you can go through in a highly political environment where billions of dollars are at stake and everyone has their own preferred interests and you have entrenched contributors who like when they come up with a, a viewpoint, they're never going to change. And so it may result in a, a ton of deadlock for the protocol itself. So like, how do you build around that? And the answer is sub -dows. Yep. He's seen some shit. That's for sure. And uh, on that note, <laughs> this was uh, This Week in Frax. Uh, I'm your host, Cephi Dave, here with Sam McCullough and Capital K. If you want to be here for every week with This Week in Frax, for everything Frax, DeFi, and everything in between, you know what to do. Hit that bell button, subscribe, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. Give us a like. Make sure you follow us on our socials, uh, at Flybo DeFi, at Twitter, TikTok, and Telegram. Uh, make sure you subscribe to FlyboDeFi.com for all our latest updates. Join our friend tech for exclusive content. Uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter at DeFiDave22. Follow me at 0x capital underscore K. And I'm at traders underscore inside. And we'll see you next week. Peace. 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 <laughs> uh, God, <I'm> <laughs>